Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Community Church Eastbourne. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. fantastic welcome this morning and thank you to Rob and Gemma for that beautiful rendition of Blessed Be Your Name. Now today is Father's Day and that can bring a lot of mixed emotions for people but we pray that you enjoy the service this morning and that you rest in the knowledge that we all have this amazing Heavenly Father who loves each and every one of us so much. Now before we get started the first thing I have to do is hand over to our birthday Parrot this week. Is it on? Are we ready? Okay. Hi, my name's Polly, and I'm here because Kaneen finally managed to sell that camel Humphrey on eBay this week. Only joking, he's just gone on holiday. So I thought I'd come along and do the birthdays for y'all. There are no birthdays this week, but we did miss one last week, and that's Jonah. So I'm going to sing for him today. A happy birthday 
to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jonah. Now I'm going back to the zoo. Bye bye. Bye y'all. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Polly. That was unique. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful world we live in and how it was made by your awesome hand. Lord, we pray that you comfort and heal those that are suffering physically, that you mend broken hearts and that you provide for those in need right now. Lord, help us to be a better blessing to our community around us to stand strong in your word, to serve through your love, and to live for your name. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, we've got a story. It's really quiet in Eden's room because she's in the lounge being babysat by the magic box. So I thought I'd come in here and read you all a story. So whether you're two or 92, grab a bear, Get cosy and we'll begin. And this book is called Geronimo and it's by David Walliams. It's about a penguin that lives in Antarctica. So I think we need some penguin sound effects. At the bottomest bottom of the world lived a huge colony of emperor penguins. All the eggs were being kept warm by their dads when one baby penguin hatched. His name was Geronimo. Let's fly, he announced, flapping his wings as fast as he could. Penguins can't fly, son, replied his father. Of course they can, Dad. Otherwise, what have we got wings for? Watch! With his feet as skis, the baby penguin used a snowy slope as a runway. Geronimo, he cried as he sped faster and faster. He hit a bump on the slope and took off. Whiz! For a few <clears throat> glorious seconds, Geronimo sailed through the air. Dad, look, I can fly! The baby frantically flapped his wings before dropping through the air like a stone. He landed in the freezing cold sea with a plop. You see, son, penguins can't fly, said Dad. Geronimo looked sad. But it's all I dream about. There must be a way for my dream to come true. Geronimo spied an elephant seal dozing on the ice. He leapt onto the seal's big wobbly tummy to use it as a trampoline and launched himself into the air. Boing! Dad, look, I can fly, said Geronimo before landing in the deep snow with a thud. Next, Geronimo paddled out to sea and clambered on top of a big blue whale, sitting right on top of its blowhole. Splurt! Air shot up Geronimo's bottom and blasted him into the sky like a rocket. Dad, look, I can fly! As soon as the whale stopped blowing, Geronimo plummeted. The angry whale flicked its tail, swish, batting the little penguin across the sky. Dad, look, I can! But before he could say fly, he slammed straight into an iceberg. Doof. His dad had to give him beak to beak resuscitation. It's time to give up on your dream, son. Never, dad. Dreams can come true. I know it. <clears throat> Every night when dad tucked Geronimo under his ice sheet, the baby penguin would dream the same dream. A flight, a soaring high in the air, swooping and twirling, touching the clouds, the king of the sky. His dad had had that dream too when he was young. The next morning, Geronimo leaped onto the back of an unsuspecting albatross. Look, dad, I can fly! But not for long. The overloaded albatross crashed headfirst into a pod of baby seals, knocking them into the sea like bowling pins. Boom, boom, boom. Splash, splish, splosh. The emperor, emperor penguin turned to dad. You have to tell your son, once and for all, penguins can't fly. With a heavy heart, Dad told his son, 
No more trying to fly, Geronimo. The dream is over. Dad felt awful as a single tear rolled down his son's face. So awful that later that night, while Geronimo was sleeping, he called a meeting of the whole colony. Fellow penguins, are we sure it is absolutely impossible for us to fly? Yes, of course, barked the Emperor Emperor Penguin. There must be a way, replied Dad. No, never, fool. Didn't you ever dream of flying, asked Dad. This silenced the colony. They'd all had that dream when they were young. Let's put our bird brains together and see, said Dad. That's exactly what they did. By the time the sun came up, the colony had a plan. When Geronimo woke that morning, the strangest sight greeted him. The entire colony of penguins was upside down. What's happened? asked Geronimo. What do you mean, what's happened? replied Dad, who, like all the other penguins, was standing on his head. You are all upside down. No, you're upside down. Come jump off the ice and you will soar into the sky. Dad pointed at the sea. Yes, yes, replied the whole colony. Yes, that's the sky, said the Emperor Emperor Penguin, pointing at the sea. Now come on, Geronimo, said Dad. Show us the dreams can come true. The penguins really can fly. So with that, Geronimo made a giant leap. Splash! The little penguin flapped his wings and zoomed through the water, thinking it was sky. I can fly! I can fly! I can fly! He yelled. <laughs> On Dad's signal, the colony dived in two. Splish, splash, splash. Dad held his son's wing. The pair shared a smile. Together they looped the loop, very nearly bumping into an iceberg. Be careful of the clouds, called out Dad. They passed a killer whale. Dad, why is that whale floating upside down in the sky? asked Geronimo. He must have jumped, said Dad. Oh. Dad watched with pride as his son soared up, up, up. Dad, look, I can fly. I'm the king of the sky. Sometimes, with a little help and some upside down penguins, dreams really can come true. I love that story. It's such a beautiful example of a dad that bends over backwards and will do anything just to show a son how much he loves him. And we all know a heavenly dad who's done and does just that. Now it's time for another song about our dad that provides. And it is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
dad because he, he, he helps me with my Lego and he's like Superman. Our dad's, dad's amazing because he takes me out driving and he puts up with every single Disney trip that I take him on. <laughs> love, love you, dad. dad. I love my daddy because he likes the same sports as me. I love my dad because he takes me on long bicycle rides by the sea. He also cooks delicious food. I'm vegetarian too. We, we love him. My dad's amazing because he takes me on yogi bike rides. Daddy is amazing because he encouraged me to join Sea Cadets and now I'm at the top of where I can be. Daddy is amazing because he encouraged me to do skateboarding and now I think I'm really good at it. Our oh, daddy's amazing. He feel this. <laughs> this Our dad's amazing because he loves us and he'll do anything for us. Hi, um, my dad is amazing because he taught me to ride uh, my bicycle. He took me all the way uh, to college on my first day when I was nervous. He um, always makes fruit salads for me when I'm studying. Um, he cooks my favorite meals when I come home and because he is the best dad. I like my dad because he always helps me with my mask. And he's just really, really special to me. Thank you, kids. That was so awesome seeing how much you love your dads and hearing all the amazing things that they do for you. I'm sorry that we couldn't have included all the kids in the church in our video. We're so blessed with the amount that we have. I look forward to hearing from more of you over the coming weeks. But that little clip leads beautifully into our main talk. Now I'm going to talk to you today about dads and dreams, which is a lovely subject considering it's Father's Day. But who can remember back to the 5th of January this year and what the subject of the service was then? Anyone? It was 2020 vision and during that service we came up with a range of ideas about how as individuals and as a church we can better bless our church and our community and here are just a few of them. We had hold a community picnic, organise a church 5k run, encourage each other, start a Friday night youth group, visit the lonely, get to know our neighbours, pray more for each other and many more. Now some of those ideas are still workable in today's climate but a lot of them aren't and have had to be put on hold. And that can be really frustrating in life when you've got an idea or a dream that is just being delayed. How do you cope with that pain and frustration? A new baby that you're longing for, a new house that you desperately need, a new job that you just haven't heard back from. What do you do? Where do you turn? You take those dreams to the specialist. You take those dreams to dad. Now, when I was in my 20s in another church, there was a young adults meeting once that we went to where we were asked to write down our dreams, store them in a safe place, take them to God and pray over them. And this was my little jar of dreams. And there were a few things in there that at the time seemed impossible to me. But over the coming years of waiting to see if my heavenly dad would make those dreams a reality, I picked up a few ideas about how to cope with the delay and I'd like to share those with you today. Number one, no dad cares. I once heard of a Father's Day card that had the following written on the front. A woman knows all about her children. She knows about dentist appointments and soccer games and romances and best friends and favourite foods, and secret fears, and hopes, and dreams. A man is vaguely aware of some short people living in the house. Now I'm not sure how true that is in most families, but in ours there is a slight ring of truth. You see, when it comes to dentist appointments, to schoolwork, to after school clubs, to friends, to food likes and dislikes, it's me that's got the day-to-day -day running of things covered. It's me that the kids come to. But although I might know my children's dreams, when it comes to making them a reality, they turn to the specialist, they turn to their dad. 
Zion wanted a train set last Christmas and we don't have the space to fit one in, so Stephen built him a folding one. Eden was sad that she couldn't go to the park during lockdown, so Stephen built her a swing. And my own dad has been the same over the years for myself and my brothers. He has always put himself out to make our dreams a reality. It's just that as we've got bigger, our dreams have got a little bit bigger as well. And we could see from the video earlier from some of the church kids that making dreams a reality, no matter how big or small, is a running theme with dads. There was a YouTuber called Lad Baby who made this for his children. A lockdown McDonald's just to make them smile. You see, the first step with dealing with unrealised dreams is knowing that you have a dad in heaven who cares about them. No matter your situation, whether your earthly dad cares or doesn't, whether your earthly dad is there or isn't, you always have a dad in heaven who is there and whose heart aches for what you're longing for as much as you do. Number two, dream with purpose. Probably most of you have heard of the Christian book that came out a few years ago called Purpose Driven Life. Well, what about purpose driven dreams? Taking the dream that you have in your heart to your heavenly dad and saying, what can I do to dream this better? How can I line up what I want with what's in your will? That job you're after, how can you use your position to show God's love to those around you? That house you need, how can you be a real blessing to the neighbours in that area? God will always have his take on your dreams, his way of lining your dream up with his purpose. But you have to be willing to adapt your expectations to find it. Number three, dream unlimited. You have a limitless dad in heaven, so you can have limitless dreams. In fact, God loves it when you dream big. What better way of displaying his glory to others than when you achieve something that would be impossible for you to do on your own? Take your dreams to God and supersize them, knowing that God is fully capable of achieving anything. There are countless examples of unassuming people in the Bible overachieving. Here's some of them. A 90 year old woman gave birth to a son and became the mother of many nations. A small boy defeated a giant and went on to become king. A fugitive freed his people against all odds. An orphaned young woman risks death to beg a king for mercy and succeeds. A baby born in a stable saved the world. Don't let your dreams be limited by your situation or your ability, but let them be freed by your dad in heaven of the impossible. Number four, do not quit. I can't stress this one enough. Life gets so hard sometimes. Dreams can appear lost. Everything can seem hopeless, but it's not. All the best things I have in my life have taken a lot of time, a lot of prayer, a lot of waiting. Sometimes your dad in heaven provides what you need before you've even asked for it. And other times, he doesn't. Keep praying, keep asking. He will not get bored if you ask him for the same thing again. He has not forgotten. Sometimes he just wants to see your perseverance for a dream before it's made a reality. He wants to see how much you want it. Always keep in mind that your dreams may need some adjusting to line them up with God's will before they become a reality and that your timing is not his. We struggle waiting until the 11th hour, but God does not struggle operating in it. After all, 
How does the end of the John Greenleaf witty poem go? So stick to the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. Number five, leave it with dad. This one's hard, really hard. How do you stop yourself thinking and worrying about something that you want so badly, especially when it seems like nothing is happening? I wish I had a foolproof answer for this one, but it's something that I still struggle with. The best thing you can do is refer back to my first point and remember you have a dad in heaven who feels what you feel. So even when you don't have all the answers, even when it seems like nothing is happening, your dad in heaven has got it covered. You can take action to relieve your worry. Immerse yourself in God's word. Pray to him whenever you're doubting. Distract yourself with other tasks. Take any small steps that you can to get things moving and then rest in God's love for you, his child. So to recap, how we cope with dreams. Number one, no dad cares. Number two, dream with purpose. Number three, dream unlimited. Number four, do not quit. Number five, leave it with dad. And finally, I will leave you with those well-known verses about a dad providing for his children. Matthew 7 verses 7 to 11. Ask, seek, knock. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Now, for those of you that were wondering what was in my jar earlier, there are several dreams in here that have already become a reality and the ones that haven't I'll be praying about later. But I thought I'd pull one out for you just to show you that even years afterwards, when you think it's not going to happen, dreams can come true. In my 20s, I wrote that I wanted to lead praise and worship in church one day. It didn't seem very likely back then. I was a young woman with IBS and with a uh, at times very dodgy voice but now years later I get to lead worship on a Sunday morning in our wonderful church and it's such a privilege it just took patience and that leads nicely into our final song and it's a new one and it's called Waymaker You are here 
working in this place I worship you I worship you You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
Dad in heaven, I know you care about all my hopes and dreams, reaching their full potential in you, no matter how hard it seems. Every dream within my heart, regardless of how big or small, I laid in front of you right now, I know you care for them all. Make me hope for your great plan and rest in your great love, so that I may learn always to trust in my heavenly Father above. Amen. Thank you, Freya, for reading that prayer for us so beautifully. I pray that you all have a peaceful, blessed and happy Father's Day. Hopefully all the men in the church will find a little present from the church on their doorstep in the next few hours. If anyone needs anything today or in the coming days, please just get in contact with us. Chris's details are along the bottom now. Other than that, it just leaves me to say that I look forward to seeing you all next week. Goodbye. What's that? What did you say? I'm being paid in peanuts? Oh, that's it. I'm off. <laughs> My turn next time. <laughs>